Mike Hildebrand. And I'm Greg Knoll. Welcome to the updated version of the eight step process video series. First, we'll begin by examining site management and control. Then we'll talk about the process of identifying the problem. In program three, we'll cover hazard and risk evaluation. Next, discuss how to select and use protective clothing and equipment, and then how to manage information and resources. Program six will review the implementation of response objectives. Then we'll cover decontamination, and finally, how to terminate the incident. But now, let's get back to the subject of this program, site management and control. In this program, we'll cover procedures for establishing command, guidelines for safe approach and positioning at a hazmat incident, how to establish the isolation perimeter and hazard control zones, and procedures for carrying out protective actions. A hazmat incident is an emergency that can take place in the home, on the highway, in an industrial facility, and in today's world could involve a terrorist attack at any location. An incident is an event that interrupts normal procedures and requires action by emergency responders to prevent or minimize the loss of life and damage to property or to the environment. This is the second program in the eight-step process, a series about hazardous materials incident management, and it's called Identifying the Problem. We'll look at the basic elements of the identification process, show how to recognize the presence of hazardous materials, ways to identify hazardous materials. If the material cannot be identified specifically, how to determine the general hazard class or chemical family of the material. We'll also look at the basic design and construction features of hazardous materials containers. This is the third program in the H-Step process, a series about managing hazardous materials incidents, and it's called Hazard and Risk Evaluation. Let's start by getting an understanding of hazard and risk assessment. Hazards are generally the physical and chemical properties of a material that can cause harm. It could be, for example, a material's flash point or level of toxicity. Hazards are real. In contrast, risk is the probability of suffering a harm or a loss. Risks are different at every incident and can even change throughout the incident. Risk must be evaluated by a knowledgeable incident commander. The objective is to minimize the level of risk to emergency response personnel, the community, and the environment. This is the fourth program in the H-Step process, a series about managing hazardous materials incidents, and it's called Protective Clothing and Equipment. At every hazmat incident, emergency responders may confront a wide range of potentially hostile environments. Protective clothing is a critical element in limiting personnel exposures. But before you can select the right clothing and equipment for the job, you must evaluate the hazards and risk, and you need to have personnel who are trained in the use and limitations of their clothing and equipment. Let's review the different levels of protective clothing. We'll begin with structural firefighting clothing, which is designed to protect against extremes of temperature, steam, hot water, hot debris, and other ordinary hazards of structural firefighting. The fire-resistant components are porous and easily permeated by liquids and vapors. Although turnouts may provide limited chemical splash protection in an emergency situation, structural firefighting clothing offers very little protection against hazardous materials. This is the fifth program in the eight-step process, a series about managing hazardous materials incidents, and it's called Information Management and Resource Coordination. Hazardous materials inside the, the warehouse 
and in on the aircraft. Well, look at so the types of information required to, to manage out, a hazmat incident safely and effectively. On the aircraft, so we can uh, try and pull in everything that we might need on it. Also, we'll discuss how to evaluate that information. SP's coordinate that off for us. So, Need a engine and a ladder truck on the northwest side. And how to coordinate the resource groups that respond to a hazmat incident. The good news is that almost everyone can access reliable and quality technical information. The bad news is that there's now so much information available that sometimes we have a difficult time interpreting, managing, and prioritizing all this information at the emergency scene. The critical issue today is information management rather than information acquisition. You need to have a plan to manage all this information so that decisions can be made from a solid technical basis. This is the sixth program in the eight-step process, a series about managing hazardous materials incidents, and it's called Implementing Response Objectives. We'll look at the basic principles of decision-making, strategic goals, and tactical objectives. We'll examine rescue and protective actions. Spill control and confinement operations. Leak control and containment. And fire control operations. We'll also take a look at some special problems like flammable gas emergencies and reactive chemical fires. Let's begin with the basic principles of decision making. An incident is actually a sequence of events which you must understand before you take action. You must ask some basic questions. What has already occurred? What is occurring now? And what is likely to occur in the future? Once you understand the sequence of events, you can decide on the course of action which will interrupt the chain of events and favorably change the outcome. This is the seventh program in the eight-step process, a series about managing hazardous materials incidents, and it's called decontamination. In this program, we'll look at the types of contaminants and the physical and chemical methods of dealing with those contaminants. We'll examine the role of the decon unit leader, selection of the decon area, and the protective clothing required for the decon team. We'll look at both emergency and technical decon operations and see how contaminated victims are handled. We'll also take a brief look at mass decontamination techniques. And finally, we'll review guidelines for evaluating decon operations and see how cleanup is conducted. This is the eighth program in the H-Step process, a series about managing hazardous materials incidents, and it's called Terminating the Incident. In this program, we will see how to carry out a smooth and safe transition from the emergency phase of the incident to the cleanup and recovery phase. And learn the importance of providing accurate information to the people who need it. We're done with these plans right now. I'll make them immediately available to you. We'll see how to conduct a debriefing at the incident scene. Learn about the importance of documenting the incident and learn about the role the post-incident critique plays in developing more effective emergency response procedures. 